Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video we're gonna be doing a cute little relaxing ASMR plant care session. I really want to take some time and just take care of my plants and do it in a very mindful, relaxing, slow manner. I really want to slow down, look at my plants, play with them, take care of them. I recently returned from a trip, which was very, very fun. However, my plants are a little bit neglected right now. If that sounds fun to you, please grab yourself a cozy little beverage. If it's cold where you're at, wrap yourself up in a cozy, cozy blanket. I do hope you will find some relaxation out of this video. So yeah, let's get started. We're gonna get started in this section of my video shelf. And I know that I for sure have some plants that are thirsty. Like I'm pretty sure that my Maranta, my variegated Maranta over here is thirsty because she is a bit of a thirsty girl. And the way I check if my plants need water is first I will just pick it up and see how the pot feels. If it feels light, that is a pretty good indicator that she does need water. And also I like to just stick my finger in there. And again, if the soil feels dry, that's a good indicator that she needs water. I'm using some fertilizer water, just GT foliage focus. And since I am watering in place, I'm being mindful to not over water and just water a little bit. See, that's good. There is not a lot of water at the bottom, so I'm fine with that. Usually I would take my plants to the sink and then water them thoroughly. But in this case, I think I don't want to do that. I will actually just really quickly give her a look over and check if she has any pesties. I don't think she does. Usually this Melanta is not one that has pests, but we will get to one of my Melantas that does indeed have pests. But yeah, I don't see anything wrong with her. So she's looking great. Down here, I know for sure that my Scandapsis agereus needs some water and this plant is really uh, easy to tell when it needs water because the leaves will start to get a little bit curly and floppy and they will just feel not like robust and sturdy. You want your leaves to feel robust and sturdy. <laughs> go just give her some nice water oh jesus she's kind of hard to get out of this pot make sure that she doesn't have any water at the bottom or like i like to keep a little bit of water at the bottom but just like literally the smallest amount my hoya pubicalix splash um, she could use some water. I'll give her a little splash. Haha, <laughs> get it? Splash? Because she is called a Hoya Pubicalix Splash. Hilarious! But yeah, I just wanted to do something very relaxing and chill and calm today. I'm always thinking about what I have to do next. And I rarely take the time to just enjoy myself and, you know, like look really look at my plants you know i mean i do look at them of course but just it's different when you actually take your time and do something slowly and mindfully this is my epipremnum enjoy very very beautiful plant i have another one that's climbing and that one is so gorgeous so let's water her There we go. Cutie little patootie. Also, I am thinking of kind of switching up this whole shelf setup. Or like, not, not like majorly, but just making a little bit of a change. I guess we can move on to this little section over here. Over here, I mostly have some propagations. So those don't need a lot of care. Let me actually move you. There we go. 
that's better so those don't need a lot of care but i'm just gonna check them on them real quickly this is my hoya kudara sumatra a plant that i got pretty recently she is looking gorgeous and i can tell that she has still some water because there is some condensation inside the little pot so i won't water her Then we have my Hoya New Guinea Ghost, Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost, and she also has some condensation at the bottom, so another one that I won't be watering. My cute little fried egg, she is in semi hydro, she is good. I think my nearly black definitely needs water. This is my Scandapsis Truvii nearly black, and oh. <laughs> Actually, she feels pretty heavy. Yeah, she feels pretty good, so I'm not gonna water her. Just gonna put her back. Down here I have some more props. I think this girly might need some water. Yeah, she feels very, very light. This is my Hoya Compacta, just a regular green variety. So let's water her. So how have you guys been doing? What have you been up to? Um, we are already in November, which is honestly insane. Like, I feel like this year is just whizzing by us. And I feel like a lot of people feel this way. I hear from a lot of people that this year is just kind of oop, flying by. And I couldn't agree more. It's literally just... It's going by so fast. It's ridiculous. Like, I don't know where 2024 went. I mean, I feel like all the years after the pandemic are kind of just like, whew, they just go by so fast. And I don't, I don't understand why. I guess part of it is because, you know, we are getting older. I am, I mean, we all, we all are getting older. And as you get older, Kind of the novelty of living wears off. I know for me, I pretty much do the same thing every day, especially since I'm now, you know, working pretty much from home all the time. I don't get to experience like a lot of new things. And I do believe that kind of when you're when you're in this when you're kind of in a rhythm and when you're in a routine, it's it's great because you have your routine and you know what to do and you don't have to feel overwhelmed it makes time go faster because there you don't experience so many things you don't you know you don't meet new people you don't get to go to see new places that often you don't get to experience new stuff and even if you do get to experience like a lot of new things i feel like at a certain point, you're just like, you've seen it pretty much all. It's just kind of a different variation. For example, if you love going to the museums or to the theater or whatever. Yes, every show is different. But after you've seen, I don't know, after you've seen three uh, musicals, the fourth one won't maybe be as exciting. Same with like books, for example. Like if you read three romance novels, the fourth one will probably have a pretty similar formula. And I think that's what happens as you age and as you gain new experiences. You just, there's a lot of repetition and there is a lot of like variations on the same theme. And then that stuff just isn't exciting because I, I remember when I was a kid, like, I used to be bored, and nowadays I, I don't even know what it is like, what it feels like to be bored, because there is always something to do, there is always, like, I have, I don't have enough time, I wish I was bored, because I just, I always have something to do, I always have something to rush, and I think we really take for granted that feeling of being bored, because what comes out of boredom? I think really creativity and whimsy can only be born out of boredom because when you live your life in this constant circle in your daily of your daily activities it really becomes repetitive and you don't 
get to experience new stuff. You don't get to reinvent yourself. So yeah, just a little food for thought, I guess, on how I have been feeling lately. Also, since it is November, we are hitting the the colder months. And the days are shorter, there is a lot less sun, and the seasonal depression is hitting in. She is knocking on that door. But I'm really trying to be to be strong and to tell her to back off because I don't need her. So yeah. I find that embracing kind of a more cozy, slow lifestyle really does help me a lot with depression. So, and I know it's a privilege to even be able to do this. Like not everybody can take an hour out of their Sunday to just look at their plants and ponder around and, you know, talk to a camera. Obviously that is a huge, huge, huge privilege. And I don't want to take that for granted. I really don't. So while I have this privilege and while I do have this time to do this stuff, I really want to just appreciate it. Alrighty, so I think everybody on these bottom shelves is pretty good. Maybe this begonia. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so this is my begonia albopicta. And I think she could actually use some water. But she's so adorable and literally requires nothing. Literally nothing. Like, I keep her in such a low light spot. She's not fussy. She doesn't... Oh, she doesn't cause me any problems so far. And let's hope it stays that way. Okay, I'm gonna move you up so we can check the plants on the upper level of the shelf. Alrighty, so let's see what we have going on here. My Marble Queen, hmm. she actually could use some water, so I'm just going to pour some in here. Oopsie. There we go. Give her some water. I think my, yeah, the Inferium Clarinervium, she is good, so she does need water. I think the plants up here do need water, though. Okay, so this is my Inferium when the lingueri, look at this leaf, it is absolutely freaking gorgeous. But yeah, she does need, she does need water. I said it already a couple of times, but this plant is such a slow grower for me. It hasn't given me a new leaf in literal months. So I really hope that she will give me one soon. But you know, we are entering winter, so... I don't know, girly, why aren't you growing? Because <laughs> it's just such a beautiful plant and I love pendant inferiums and I really want to get more. I really want to get the palidiflorum, like that one is a wishlist plant of mine. However, they're still pretty expensive and I don't see them often in the stores that I shop at. <laughs> But yeah, they're still pretty freaking expensive. My Hoya Linearis, I talk about this plant all the time, so I'm not going to talk much about her. But she is gorgeous. Also, look at how well she is rooting. Oh my god, such a fabulous plant. That but yeah, the Palidiflorum is definitely a wishlist plant of mine. And if I could get one, I would literally croak. <laughs> because... They are so gorgeous, and from what I hear from other people growing it, it's a really easy plant. And I'm like, easy and beautiful? Hell yeah, sign, sign me the heck up. But yeah, I don't... Oh, Jesus, there we go. I don't often see them for sale at the shops that I shop at, or very rarely. And they still go for like, I don't know, 60 to 100 bucks, which honestly... I know for some people that's not a lot, but for me, it's still a little bit too pricey for a plant. I'm like, anything, you know, kind of 30 to $40 is the max, max that I will give for a plant, which doesn't leave you with a lot of options, especially if you want those really expensive, beautiful, rare ones, but... 
honestly, I know they will come down in price eventually. Like, look at some of the, like, popular plants. For example, the Columbia, the SP Columbia. This plant used to be so freaking expensive. I think it went for, like, at least $200. And nowadays, you can literally pick up a specimen of this size for $30, $40. So, yeah, I just, I kind of tried to bide my time and just wait, but I might splurge on the Pallidiflorum if I see like a really pretty big one. I might splurge. Alright, let's see what we have over there. Back in this little section, I pretty much watered all the plants over here already. I took them outside, gave them a good little wash. I think maybe my Pinatum, yeah, my Pinatum elbow needs some water, so... Let's water her. Also, my watering can is running low. Also, going to give a little bit of water to my Dicarceva. And again, this is just literally giving them just a little bit of water because, um, like I said, in, a, in an ideal scenario, I would definitely take all of these plants to the sink, water them thoroughly, yada, yada, yada. But I just... I don't feel like doing that. I want to be, I want to be cozy. I want to be lazy. So I'm just giving them a little bit of care just so they don't croak, but also to make my life easier because when I'm feeling like if I feel overwhelmed by my plants, that's not good. Then I don't want to take care of them at all. So for now, this will do just a little bit of water. They'll be fine. And then once I get kind of more, more energy, then I can actually properly take care of them. I mean, I am taking care of them. I did, like I said, I did take out some and wash them. It's just the little ones that I don't feel like taking one by one to the sink. But yeah, I think this area is done. So let's move on to another area. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, unfortunately, we are entering pest season. It seems like fall and spring is kind of a pest season for me. And whenever fall and spring hits, I just get so many pests. And it's kind of ridiculous. And unfortunately, this fall, it's the same thing. And I have the unfortunate, unfortunate privilege of having to deal with thrips every single season. I just can never eradicate them no matter what I do. But I just, I just learned to deal with it. It's not the end of the world. It's just a little pest. Like I said in my other videos, I try not to lose sleep over pests because they are just living beings and they're just trying to survive like everybody else. But unfortunately, Thrips did get to my lovely Maranta lemon lime. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but they are on this leaf. And yeah, so I'm just going to check this plant over. Actually, first things first. First things first, I'm going to take my shears. And I'm actually going to cut off the infected thrippy leaf. Because it is just one leaf that I see them on for now. And honestly, I think sometimes if you see pests on a leaf, it's better to just chop it off and get rid of it. Be especially for thrips, because thrips actually lay their little ugly eggs inside the plant tissue. So this is the leaf. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. But yeah. Like I said, I'm not too worried about it. But I will get rid of this momentarily so be right back i yeeted that leaf out just so i don't have to deal with it and i'm gonna give it a good good look over and i will definitely be treating this plant for sure but i just wanna see if i can see any more and luckily so far i don't so hopefully this was just an isolated case also the things that we saw were only thrips larvae and usually that's that's kind of the, the pest I get I don't get the the ugly grown black ones I find the odd 
brown one here and there, but most of the time I just find the little larvae. And honestly, like I said, I just deal with it. I try to, like, if I can, I remove the leaves. If not, I just treat it. I usually use my DIY pest solution, which is alcohol, castile tea tree soap, castile peppermint soap, and hydrogen peroxide, and that does the trick. And also, if that doesn't work, then I will go in with like a hardcore, well, not like a hardcore, like a biological um, pesticide, but that is literally my last resort because I don't want to use anything that's kind of harmful to me or to the environment. So that's for the last resort, but if I have to use it, oh well, I will use it. I would rather use a pesticide than you know, have the have the problem spread. Luckily, I don't see any thrips anymore on this plant. So what I will do is take her to the sink, wash her off camera, and I don't isolate my plants. In an ideal world, I would take this plant in another space, quarantine it, keep it away from other plants. But honestly, I don't do that. Mostly because even if you do, I mean, first of all, trips can spread so quickly. So even if I isolated this plant, they're probably on some of my other plants already. I mean, I already found them on some of my other plants. So first, there's that. Second of all, even if I quarantine it, I managed to get rid of all the trips on this plant. It's not a guarantee that I did. Even if it's clean for like two months, I could put it back into my collection and boom, it can get trips again. Happened to me. So... I just, I don't isolate my plants. I try to just, you know, stay on top of my pest treatments and not let it get too bad. Like, as long as it's not a full-blown infestation, I think it's all fine. It's all fine. So, yeah. That's dealt with. I will actually wash my hands right now because I don't want to touch any other plants after I was touching a um, thrip-riddled plant. So, yeah. I think that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a really, really nice time and I feel very calm. I feel very relaxed. I hope you feel the same way. And thank you so much for accompanying me. I want to remind you that you are beautiful. I want to encourage you to be kind to yourself and give yourself grace even throughout the hard times. And I just want to let you know that at the end of every storm, there is a rainbow. So just keep at it. You got this. I love you. Have an amazing, fabulous day. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.